Welcome. We're continuing our study in the book of Revelation and we are in chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 12 to 13 and it's this, the fourth angel sounding his trumpet. The fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun and a third of the moon and a third of the stars were struck so that a third of them would be darkened and the day would not shine for a third of it and the night in the same way. Then I looked and heard an, an eagle flying mid heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Let's just look at the summary again quickly so that we know where we are within the visions themselves. The first angel revealed the futility of self-reliance and independence for obtaining deliverance and or security. The second angel, in the, with the trumpet, we encounter people trying to find re the resources of the world as the means of life. The sea, the law best shows us the futility of upholding secular morality and social purposes for life and all man-made structures and abilities which leads to commerce and obtaining riches are doomed for ultimate ruin. Now the third angel highlighted the pervasiveness of the God of this age or of this world and his main aim was to sow bitterness that stems from his rejection in people's lives. His pride, rebellion and bitterness have poisoned this world and the people in it and what was meant to refresh and quench the thirst of mankind has become toxic and lethal. So let us look at the lights in the sky, the sun, moon, and stars. We go right back to creation. God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them be a signs to mark the seasons, the days and the years. And let these lights in the sky shine down on the earth. And that's what happened. God made two great lights, the larger one to govern the day and the smaller one to govern the night. He also made the stars. And God set these stars in the sky to light the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. So these lights in the sky are there to illuminate us in the natural, but they also have spiritual representation. The sun represents God's presence, the sun of righteousness. The moon represents that which reflects the glory of the sun or that which indirectly reflects its light to give us light. The stars are suns in themselves. So they can, as pointed out before, depict Holy Spirit, angels and all the righteous. But here these lights were struck. If we read the Greek word pleso, it implies that these heavenly bodies were smitten so that they may be deprived of light and shrouded in darkness, at least partially anyhow. And we know that God is light and in, in Him there is no darkness at all. So this was not His doing. On the other hand, we know of the enemy, Satan, who is the God of this age or world, has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, they are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ who is the exact likeness of God. Therefore, in their darkened, obscured state, these lights are unclear. And that leads to people depicting a warp and having a darkened view of what God intended to be lights to us in spiritual terms. What it means is seeing God's illumination or lights in an obscured or darkened way or view. This obscurity or more occult view gave rise and will give rise to earthly or human illumination or wisdom that will be influenced by the demonic as Satan is the one who blinds the inhabitants of the earth who clouds the truth that should come from these lights. These celestial lights, soiled spiritual lights, can therefore lead to and even represent false religion here, as the true light has been darkened. Ironically, in both the literal and carnal terms, 
we might find people looking to and worshipping the heavenly realm rather than its creator, God. As with astrology, or so-called pure science without a creator. So here the inhabitants of the earth are looking elsewhere to the heavens, to the spiritual, but not looking to Jesus Christ our Lord. They look to esoteric answers. But Isaiah warned, all the advice you receive has made you tired. Where are all your astrologers, those stargazers who made predictions each month? Let them stand up and save you from what the future holds. They're like straw burning in a fire they can't save themselves from the flame. You'll get no help from them at all. Whatever light or truths other religions can offer, they cloud it in the kingdom of darkness. And darkness is shrouding the truth from shining into their hearts. Because all through this, we've seen with the previous vision that what comes from heaven was the law and no one can keep it. And the only one who redeemed us from the law was the Lamb. And therefore, all other religions have an inability or capacity to deal effectively with sin and God's propitiation or anger towards sin and appeasement thereof. The occult will offer some truths to entice the inhabitants of the earth to follow their doctrine. We must just know that it's clouded. It's not an overt crossover. It's not a black and white uh, darkening of the truth and the true lights from God. So the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. And if we look elsewhere, how it worked for us as Christians, for it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, that darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It is important to reiterate that these judgments upon the earth are intended to turn people to God, to repent, and it's poured out to compel God's people to get out of the world and for the world to let them go. God's hope is that people will realize how futile it is to seek eternal life outside of His plan, which is the Lamb, of course. And these influences, plagues and trials and judgments are released to exhort, encourage and call the world to God's grace in our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the only viable alternative if you are still stuck in this world. And we'll see this process at work again and again. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. For now, another angel appears on the scene and gives another clear prophetic warning. And he comes as a great eagle. And we know that the eagle, in a sense, represents the divine. So this is a divine messenger with a divine character. And he expresses grief three times here, the number of perfect witness. Woe, woe, woe. And he directs it at those who have settled down on earth, those who have taken root in the earth and who are governed by the environment of this world. And as I've said before, understanding this is crucial for us to follow what Father God is revealing to us in the book of Revelation. For it highlights the Father's desire to see all come to repentance. Or do you think lightly of the riches of His kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance? So this is first. God, in His kindness, wants to bring people to Him. And yet if His kindness fails in that, and He cannot free people from this world, He'll use these judgment, judgments to winkle out as many as are willing to repent when they are faced with Him. These plagues are used to expose the futility on relying on anything or anyone else for eternal, one's eternal purpose and destiny and salvation. Now this is in sharp contrast to us, the people of God. We are pilgrims or nomads and sojourners or foreigners in this world, even though we are present on earth. We are not the inhabitants of the earth because we have not made this world our habitation as such. Or as Peter put it, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, 
abstain from flesh, fleshly lusts that war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that they may speak against you as evil do the, doers, they may by your good works which they observe glorify God in the day of visitation. Our citizenship is in heaven. Read Philippians 3 verse 20. But now we have to consider that for the inhabitants of the earth, those who want to make this world their habitation, things are set to get even worse. Blessings until next time.